Welcome to the session, everyone. This is Ben Sullins with Ben Sullins Data Geek. And this week, I'm going to show you how to wow your boss with Tableau. Uh, what that means is there's kind of three things that I'm going to be going through today. Uh, one is how to have a moving average on top of uh, actuals in your Tableau dashboard so you can see kind of a trend of things along with the actual details behind it. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to show a forecast, how to do some forecasts in a couple different ways to look at those. And then the last thing is kind of a fun one where I build a scatter plot and you can see trends of uh, different customer segments. So real common problems um, that, that you probably face in your business and uh, they're really easy to do in Tableau. So uh, this won't take that long. If you have any questions uh, during this time, you can ask uh, in the comment section there. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this after the fact and you have a question, you can email me at help at bensullins.com. Okay, so let's get going. And here I have Tableau Desktop, and this is just simply uh, nothing going yet. I have to connect to some data, and I'm gonna connect to the uh, sample Superstore data set. And once that's connected, uh, I'm gonna first build the one which is a moving average. So let's say that this is valuable because if you wanna look at something like sales, and if I drag order date onto columns and then drill down to say daily sales, there's a lot of data. See that every one of these little things is a different data point. There's almost a sale every day, good thing. And I'm gonna drag on sales here and you can see what happens. It becomes kind of like a mess uh, where you basically just have way too much data to try to make sense of uh, in a single viz like this. But the actuals are important, like this little point here which highlights this huge spike on March 18th is important to see. However, it's gonna skew my perception of this data. So I don't want that to actually happen. So, so what I wanna do instead is I wanna uh, show this data still, but show a moving average. So the way I'll do that is I will drag sales out again next to the one that's already there. And this will give me a second mark. So essentially I have two panes now in Tableau. And the second one, they're, they're both the same for now. What I'm gonna do is change the second one to be the moving average. So without going deep on the table calculations and how those work, Tableau's built in a lot of this great functionality for you where you simply click quick table calculation and you say moving average. And so with that, I now have essentially the moving average down below and the daily details above. So this, if I look at the edit, uh, the table calculation here though, it's only averaging the previous two. So it's like a three day moving average. I don't know if that makes sense for daily data. Um, you know, it depends on your business and what it is. A lot of people will do a seven day moving average. Uh, since I'm looking at such a wide time span here, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, uh, and choose uh, 29 days plus the current day, which gives me a 30 day moving average. So if I click that, you can see it changes. It looks quite different. Um, and then what I'll do, so I want to overlay the second one on top of the first one. So I need them to both occupy the same space. So there's different ways to do that. The way that I think is easiest is if I just click on my second measure here and I choose dual axis. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna actually uh, draw them both on top of each other. And on the left, you'll have one axis. On the right, you'll have a different one. And generally, that's that's bad. Generally, we, we don't recommend this in the data viz world because it's just super confusing. Uh, and you can find correlations and things that don't make any sense at all. So instead, um, it, it'll be fine, though, if we synchronize the axis. So if I right-click on my secondary axis and I choose synchronize, you'll see that the scales aren't off and, and it's telling an accurate story. Now I can uh, hide this here, I can uncheck show header, so I'm not confused by that, because so I only have one scale to worry about visually when I'm trying to consume this information. Okay, this is the most basic example. Now, of course, uh, I wouldn't recommend having these colors, they're both super bright and kind of uh, jumping out at me. So let's say I want sales to be more subtle. Um, let's say if I were to go to a light palette with that one, make it like a green, and uh, do maybe a medium with this one, uh, the medium blue, see how that looks. There you go. And maybe I'll even make the, uh, the moving average a, a dark one. Pretty trees. 
Okay, so there you go. So I still have the context of my uh, daily detail in my viz, uh, but I also have the moving average. So my eyes, when I'm looking at this, because I, I made the color of the daily detail, the sales, uh, very kind of faint, it, it's not drawn to that. It's drawn to the actual dark blue line here. So we're, we're achieving that goal of sharing uh, the meaningful thing, which in this case, 30-day moving average across such a large time span, but we're not losing the detail, right? So you can kind of have, have your cake and eat it too, I guess. So the next one I wanna show you is just a, this same thing, but just a bit of a cleaner version. So what I would do to make a cleaner version, and I'll just duplicate this, we'll call this basic. I'll duplicate this sheet here. And when I duplicate the sheet, what we have is the same thing, but I'm gonna change the mark type. So we're both using lines right now, but I want that first one to be a circle. And you'll see what happens is that, okay, it's, it's less cluttery now, right? It, the lines connecting those dots are, are less attention grabbing. Uh, they're not pulling me away from the dark blue line here. So I could play with this some more. Um, I'd probably adjust the size, make it a little bit smaller. And you need to be aware of kind of what your, uh, what your audience is gonna be consuming this on, if it's a mobile device or something else. So you still have the detail there, and you can see though now that that blue line is really standing out. So I still have all the details of the other things, and maybe this one up here is an anomaly. I'm gonna go ahead and exclude that one for the purpose of this demo. Maybe, maybe we actually duplicated our data. So there you go, you can get a better sense now of just you know what the trend actually is. And so when I look at this as a user, I'm, I'm pretty much instantly drawn to this blue line. And the other stuff, I might not even know what it is, and, and down the road, you know, what, what I would probably do again is I would change this to be uh, daily actuals and then call this one 30 day average or something like that. Okay, so that way you have some kind of indicators there of, of what's what. So that's a cleaner one. I could even play with the size of the line here. Maybe that it should be a little bit lighter since we have such a so much variation there in that. And there you go. So that is like the, the cleaner version of the first one. Now, the third thing I would do is I would probably add sort of a reference here because it's cool to see the 30 day moving average, but I probably want to know like what is the actual average. So let me duplicate that sheet again. And in this case, what I'm going to do is actually just go up to my analytics pane and drag on an average, and I'm just gonna do it, see, I can add it for both of them if I do it like that, and I can add it, it's, it's just one table right now, so that's where I'll wanna drag it, but I, I can just add it to the second one here, which is that uh, calculation, so I don't have to have an average on both of them. I'm just gonna do an average of the moving average, essentially, so what is like my overall average here for the daily sales, and it's $1,813. And then I can format this if I want, I'll actually just do an edit. And I can say, you know, a common thing to do is to say, uh, for the label, give it something like average, maybe like overall average, and then put the value in there, something like that. Hit okay. And you can see that I now have this indicator there for my users. So that's a way, this is what I would do, the first step I would say to wow, because this is really gonna tell a much more interesting story um, than just either of these things combined. And you, you have a lot of things visually on the page here, but you're not really killing the viz by distracting them with, the, with too much data. You know, we're trying to eliminate the chart, chart junk, we're trying to use colors in a meaningful way. And this is uh, something I've actually done quite a bit where it's real common a viz that I would create of a moving average of some type and dots for the actuals. Uh, and, and people team tend to get it. So give that a go. And, and if you have any questions about that or you get tripped up, again, uh, ping me on either Twitter or at help at bensolens.com. Okay, so I'm gonna call this one added reference. All right, take two or act two, the forecast. And this one's pretty straightforward, but I can't tell you how many years being able to produce some sort of a forecast around sales or any metric just will just, it really just, just goes a long way, especially with the business type 
audience. So if you're if you're building this for you know a, a business person, uh, then then they're gonna they're gonna like this. So basic steps to build a forecast in Tableau. It honestly can't be easier. I drag order data. I'll go ahead and drill down to the month. You know, let's go down to week and see gets even more data, more interesting there. So we have data points there. I'm gonna drag a measure on. Uh, we've been working with uh, sales, so let's stick with sales. All right, it's crazy all over the place, just like we saw in the last viz. But what I wanna do now is just right click in my, my pane here and choose forecast, show forecast. Now this one has an interesting thing because it's basically saying I don't really have enough good data or I can't really find a good pattern in it. So I wanted to show that because sometimes this is what you get and it's it's not meaningful. So maybe in this case, because our data is so wide, it's from 2011 uh, to two, so four years of data, maybe a week isn't the correct grain at which to look at it. Maybe a month would be more accurate. Well, certainly visually, that makes more sense, right? I can actually see these kind of trends and then I can actually get a forecast now, which is pretty awesome. And, and using this, you know, the, the dark line in the middle is the one that's the actual prediction and the bands are the confidence of where it might be. So this is really powerful. Uh, it, in doing this little thing, that one click and changing it there, it actually ran several different models. It picked the, the one that, that makes the most sense and it drew that. And I can actually download this data. So if I don't want this in this format, I can highlight that data and I can actually download it right there. So I could actually just punch this into Excel. So even if, this is one of the interesting things about Tableau is you don't have to uh, deliver things in Tableau to get value out of it, right? I could be punching this back into Excel and saying, here you go. And that's a far better way or a far more accurate way of coming up with these projections than any kind of linear basic modeling that you're probably doing in Excel. Uh, not to say you can't do more advanced modeling in Excel, but just to say that it, it's not common. So. There's that, that's the forecast. Now we can slice and dice this forecast. So we can look at the forecast for different things. Like if I were to drag category onto rows, I'd be able to see different projections for different category lines. Now, sometimes as I go down, it may get a little fuzzy. If I drill down um, from category to subcategory, you can see it's taking a little bit longer there because it's having to run several different forecast models for every single one of these across every, sing uh, every month here, this, these long time spans. So you can see, you know, it gets kind of fuzzy when you have that many. So, you know, granularity is important. Um, you know, I talk about that a lot when I talk about my data viz stuff. But there you go. I mean, this is like the basic, most basic thing to do. Uh, just for, you know, contrast sake, I'll, I'll, I'll draw it on the page there. And that alone, to get to this point and come up with data that's that valid, that's, va that, that's, that's worth a lot of money right there. Uh, a company now can take this and act on it. This is some of the most actionable data. Think about forecasting for next year or budgeting. If you want to think about, you know, how much money are we going to make? This is a great way to do it. And it's probably a lot better than, okay, well, what was the percentage increase from the previous year to this year? And assume that that's going to continue or go up. Uh, there's just a much, much more deeper, there's just much more nuance to these kind of things. So this is a great way and one of the best ways to really kind of wow your boss uh, in that sense. I'll call this one forecast. And then the next one here I wanna show is a different, different take. It's one that you've probably seen demoed in Tableau quite a bit. And what it is is a, uh, a scatter plot with trend lines. And so what a scatter plot does, it's really interesting. So it's, it's only, there's no, uh, uh, there's no dimensions typically. Uh, or, you know, for the ad, there's two axes instead of like rows and columns. So what I have here is essentially uh, profit on one and sales on the other. So in total, you know, the combination of those two things is right here. So summed up at that highest level, here is exactly where, uh, you know, the, the, the total aggregation of my entire data set, set comes. Now, this becomes really meaningful because what you can do after we, we get it to a lower level of detail is you can find clusters, you can do trends, you can find outliers, just super easy. So imagine if we wanted to look at, do some customer analysis. I'm gonna drag customer name onto detail. 
Now for every circle you're seeing here, and I can play with the shapes if I want, every circle you're seeing here is a different customer. See that, so you see the customer name, the profit, and, and the actuals. And now this is a sum for the entire data set. So if I wanted to show a filter here, maybe on, uh, on year, and I wanted to filter out, okay, let me just look at the past two, or two years of my data set. You can see how it changes, right? And you can see that we have Tamara Chand, and we have a few other folks, Raymond Birch, and then you have some people way down here, Cindy Stewart, Grant Thor. I mean, these are people we are losing money on, essentially, right? We're selling them stuff, uh, but we are, we're, we're losing money. Um, so that's not good. All right. So now what I can do is kind of dig in deeper and say, okay, well, here's the individual customers and maybe, you know, anybody down here, I want to kind of uh, put them into uh, a set or let's just get, get all the details we can. So customer name, profit sales, I'm going to go uh, take this and email this list over to our sales director and say, Hey, what's going on with these guys? Why are we losing money on these customers? Um, the other thing, you know, if I want to see, okay, is it beyond just the individual, but it's more about a segment or a trend or a different attribute about my my uh, uh, my customers, I can drag on something like segment or any of these other things to color, and now I'm I'm seeing the different colors of them. So I can see that uh, the corporate segment was our most profitable and one of our worst ones there. So the deal now is that what I what I can do is actually add trends to this. So I can add, take on my add analytics tab again, add a trend line here, and I'm just gonna do linear, assuming that there's a linear relationship between these variables, which is a, a fair assumption, sales and profit probably is. If I hit edit trend lines, uh, I'm gonna get rid of the confidence bands, and this is also where I can change if I have a logarithmic, exponential, or polynomial uh, a relationship. So you can see there, as in this case, what is describing sales on the x-axis. So as sales increases, Profit goes up, makes sense, but how steeply shows me where I'm actually making the greater amount of money. And here, you know, just doing these trends, you can see as I hover over it, I get some legit answers here. I have a p-value, I have an r-squared value, and it even shows you kind of uh, uh, the calculation there. So looking at that, you know, it looks like if I wanted to make a very simplistic decision on this now, that our corporate customers are the ones where we're going to yield. Uh, the highest profit margin. Surprise, surprise. Corporations generally get kind of gouged on pricing. So uh, you can see that there. So the consumer one, not doing bad, uh, but consumer and home office are pretty similar and corporates really kind of far and above. And you can highlight those there. So this is, I would say, just customer segment analysis. And those are the three ways that are you can take and, and you can um, wow your boss with that. So you can go to uh, my website a little bit after this and uh, sign up for my newsletter and I'll actually send this download in that so you can you can just reverse engineer everything I did here in case you have any questions or in, in your process of doing it, um, you get stuck. Okay. Looks like we don't have any questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this session, and I'll see you back here next week uh, where we dig into some more fun tips to help you uh, use data and elevate your business. I'll see you back here then.